everyone and welcome back to a episode or the showcase episode I should say of Jurassic World Evolution 2 Camp Cretaceous showing you all of the dinosaurs as well as the free update which they've added in which gives you loads of decorations and stuff for free. So before we look at the you know the new dinosaurs uh, let's have a look at the decorations and just see how much of a difference it can really make to a park that you've made in the past or uh, parks going forward. Let's take a look. So, before we do anything, let's go into first person view. It's a bit like Google Earth, you can click anywhere and you will just quickly jump down and be down here. Um, so, there's no head bobbin, which I thought there might be. Um, you can shift to go high speed. You actually have a little flashlight that you can use. So, if you want to make like a spooky first person-y horror looking thing, that's a really cool thing you can do. You can also hide the hood as well. Um, you can actually open uh, buildings as well, so you can really, um, you know, actually manage an entire park down here. So this is, I think, a new flower bed. Uh, this one is also a new flower bed, but I'm pretty sure this is completely new. <laughs> completely new, the Jurassic Tour. Um, you can actually place the flagpoles in the middle of paths now. Maybe you could have done that before, I'm not so sure. This is 100% new, uh, being an amber little piece as well as some little shade stands here there's a, a little i don't know bamboo shoot thing here but the biggest difference is this from jurassic world the spinosaurus statue that the t-rex destroys um so as you can see here you've also got these fountains as well which look glorious uh, you've got that too also, these trees, individually blazable trees, whatever to say. I can't. English is tough, okay? It's not my first language. My first language is gobbledygook. Uh, <laughs> uh, you've also got some other little statues like that, the little pteranodons there. Um, you've also got trees in pots, which looks it makes way more sense if they're placed in a path. And good news is um, you can place all of these as close or into the pavement or paths as you like. Oh, also this as well. This is new. Uh, the Jurassic Park kind of torches uh, gates that you've got there, which is a really nice touch. Uh, but we'll quickly jump out of here um, to reveal down here another big difference. So there is giant water fountains that are in circles. These are absolutely fantastic because you can just make the path go around them, as you can see quite clearly I've done here. Also these, you've got like a Mosasaur little flagpole. You've got a Pteranodon Avery flagpole. I think it's the same on either side, yeah. So it doesn't matter which way you put it. It's, uh, it's kind of reversible. Uh, and over here, um, but we're going to get more into this when we go into the dinosaurs, but cages have been added. So this is another fountain, um, which has amber and rocks and bits. You've got Jurassic 2 here. Look at that. It's so good. I love this. It is awesome. And then, you know, a little bit of cage. We're going on a tour, so I thought I'd put a little cage there. Uh, as well as the trees, because I think even if you place the regular forest-like placer that we had before, you cannot get trees this close to a path. And it's just so good to be able to do this because uh, one problem that Jurassic World or Evolution 2 or Evolution in general uh, has uh, Planet Zoo doesn't have is that everything feels open. Everything's big. Everything's ginormous. But being able to place things really close to paths, including trees, gives a more intimate feeling and a, a more, I don't know, polished look to the game. I mean, you can't place things too close together. There is still a little bit of proximity. Oh, good lord. I was, whew, I was fast. Um, proximity to each other. So if we quickly go into decoration, so we'll have a look. So you've got all these flagpoles. You've got all the different signs. But again, there is still that. But if you've got PC and you are playing this on PC, you can just merge them in together, which is obviously going to be what you want to do. Uh, you've got a couple there that were from the original. But then these trees, for instance, I mean, you can you know, space bar it just to make, you know, randomness if you want. But now you've got the amber, which again is from Jurassic World, from Jurassic World Main Street, which is really nice. So you can now get a more accurate thing. Uh, if you want to recreate Jurassic World. Uh, this is for Pteranodons to sit on. Avery Perch Point Large, you've got a small one. you got, now this is brilliant. So if you want to make, you know, maybe you don't want to make a park. Maybe you're just playing around a sandbox and you want to make it look like a, a poaching setup has, has happened. So you've got all these different cages. Uh, things to note from this is the Stegosaurus and Triceratops uh, cages from the Lost World. Uh, the T-Rex cage from the Lost World, um, and the hatchery from Jurassic Park. So we're getting, you know, callbacks. 
which is really nice. We're getting not only Jurassic World, but we're getting Jurassic Park and even the Lost World. Uh, no Jurassic Park 3 down plane, which would be really cool. Um, so if we look in here, I've had a little bit more of a play around. So this, I don't know if this is new or if it was in other updates, but this is a large hotel. Uh, obviously, there's different, you know, when you go into buildings, you have the Jurassic Fallen Kingdom, you have, uh, like, Jurassic Parks, and then you have the the WDC, the wildlife and yada yada. I should be wearing that jumper! The hoodie, two seconds. Yes! There we go! I'm part of them now! Hope it doesn't mess with the green screen. I feel like, I feel like this badge will. That'll be like a bit see-through, but hey-ho, we're here. Thanks for a tear. <laughs> and we're back. So, um, you can place these two down. There's like a large one, and then this one is a small one. And I've also, you know, we, you've got tents as well that you can place down. There's benches, actually, if we go into first-person mode, there's benches inside the tent as well as little boxes. Now, what I'm hoping is that going forward, we can, you know, get more customization so maybe we can place you know even just little things like this down i uh, apologize there hair in my mouth yeah. but i mean at the moment you you can do very big things like i you can place down this tent you can place down yeah i suppose that's a bit of medium that bit of wall and then they, these boxes oh god it does not like me. If we can also place down the bases as well, so like square bits of pavement and things like that, instead of, you know, I want to make it fit in, I have to do paths like this. There's so much more that we can add to this game, like vending machines and stuff. There's so, so many little bits of customization. Um, and I'm hoping that going forward, we can get more stuff like this. You know, this, this doesn't have to be an update that comes out with Camp Cretaceous. What if every month, this game updated and gave you just more things to decorate your park with. And really, you know, you don't have to go to the extent of, you know, making dinosaurs or new dinosaurs to keep people interested. Just give us more customization and this game will stay alive and for a lot longer. Um, so here we go. I've made the uh, Jurassic Park bit here. We put a giant crane next to it. So that's where we're going to drop the cows in, I assume. Uh, as well as some crates there, some boxes, and the Velociraptor thing, where Joffrey, the uh, gatekeeper, unfortunately, got nommed on. <laughs> so, now that we've seen all of the different, you know, little things you can get there, as well as the first person mode, how about we check out some of the new dinosaurs? And so, of course, it's what you've been waiting for. So, let's have a look in here. Right, so the first one is, of course, a Carnotaurus. Now, of course, it's not any Carnotaurus. This is this now is the paid stuff. This is the Camp Cretaceous DLC. This is Toro. Uh, unfortunately, there is only one skin for Toro, um, and it is not. Oh, there we go. It is not the skin with the scar. So, I mean, a lot of people were expecting it to be like the the, the exploded bird version. And to be honest, I kind of was as well. I was kind of expecting that. Um, but if you look at it, it it's a lot smoother than Carnotaurus actually looks like. Um, but it definitely is Toro. I was hoping that we'd get an alternate skin which had the scar on the nose and was, you know, more dark red and black, more like, you know, after the explosion in season one or two it was. Um, but again, a nice little addition. Not something that I think everyone's gonna be crazy over. Um, and now, unfortunately, we can't, without getting lucky, get all of the three Baryonyx in one release. So first off, well, we'll just release this one. Uh, there's Grim Chaos, and I cannot remember the other one. Um, yes, I actually don't remember it, and I don't know which one this one is. But good news is, we'll be able to check. So yes, this is Grim, actually. This is, unfortunately, the Baryonyx that dies in this show. What a shame, oh dear. Um, does it get killed by Scorpius? I can't remember. Uh, but as you can see, it's a lot smoother. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that's to fit in with the, you know, the, the tune shaded aesthetic that the show uh, has itself. So we'll release both of those and just wait for them to come out. Right, so who are you? You are Limbo! That's what I can't remember. I couldn't remember which one you were. Limbo. So this one's sporting more of a a mahogany or a crimson with a green. And you'll notice between these two, oh, well, not that one. Um, they, their patterns are different. So we've got a splodge of green on the leg there. If we go to this one, uh, we don't have a splodge of green. 
or you know, a splodge of crimson if they just changed the skins. So not only are these different colors, but they're different patterns as well. And what's interesting about this guy, because I think this one's Chaos. Yes, it is. Um, Chaos is very similar looking to the Baronex that is saved in um, Fallen Kingdom and also makes an appearance in probably in Dominion, I'm assuming. So that is the Baryonyx Trio released. Um, out of all of those, yeah, I'm kind of all right. Not, not too fussed with them, but in coming the new dinosaur and it comes with its own skins as well. Um, this is a 2015, they, they, they've named them. And what's interesting is some of them have sizes on them, which is very odd. Uh, so we have a look at this. This is the Monolophosaurus 2015, um, which I'm very confused. I'm assuming 2015 is, of course, when Camp Cretaceous happened. I, when I first saw it, I was like, do we have this? But of course, that was Pro-Ceratosaurus. But this guy, I can't wait to test out. I'm assuming it has different animations. We'll make a separate video just checking all that out. Uh, but you can see it here in all of its glory. Next, another dinosaur. I was kind of surprised that that was getting a skin in this was the Oranosaurus. So I'm actually kind of curious to see the size difference between this Oranosaurus and a regular Oranosaurus because if we click on the skin, it says Oranosaurus 2015. Um, actually, it doesn't even put its its full thing in because if we go into here, size small. So here is a regular sized Oranosaur and hopefully, oh God, it seems to be a bit panicked, yes. Hopefully we'll have a look at it and see what the difference is between this one and the other Oranosaurs that have seemed to have, they've ran around. <laughs> that looks way bigger than this. So it is a completely different model. There was the jump scare something that we thought, oh, is it gonna be Spino, but it was an Oranosaur. Yes, okay. <laughs> Complete uh, shock to everyone, I think, who was a, uh, we're following Camp Cretaceous. So this, oh, I should say these, will look very bland because these are the Parasaurolophus looks or Paralux. If anyone's curious as to why it's not called the Bioluminescent Parasaurolophus, um, Parasaur looks is actually in Jurassic World Alive and it is the Bioluminescent Para. So I suppose if for the first time it's already been in the franchise as far as the gaming world is concerned, so they thought they would just keep it the same. So what we'll do is we'll also release the other variant of the Parallax, because there is two of them, but I'm also kind of curious as to whether in the daylight they also have uh, a different kind of skin tone, because when they're luminescent or they're glowy, they definitely um, it will look a lot different. Oh, the herd, the herd's already moved out. So before we get into the Scorpius Rex, let's have a look at the Kentrosaur. So this one is Pierce. And I think this one's called Large. It's like Pierce size large. Um, so maybe this is bigger than a regular um, Kentrosaur because possibly Jurassic World Evolution had already sized their Kentrosaur and it was a lot smaller than Pierce. So, you know, to try and keep it faithful to the uh, the franchise, maybe they're like, oh God, it needs to be bigger. We'll just say size large. So yeah, look at that. Gee, look at the difference. And that's a regular Kentrosaur. So I'm kind of curious, does this guy have any differences when it comes to, so 57 in comparison to this guy, which hasn't actually finished his animation. Yeah, look at the size difference there. So what's really good about this is that you could say that the regular uh, Kentrosaurs are actually babies and this one's a lot bigger. But if we just have a quick look, you can definitely tell that the plates are a lot more rounded in comparison to Jurassic World Evolution's original. I'm really liking this. Because we have two of the same species. Well, they're the same species, but they are different sizes. So it's a shame that you can't change the color on the adult, which is Pierce. But you can definitely change the color of the small one, which you could probably get very close to. So now onto the star of the show, or one of the stars, that is Bumpy. So I was very curious, uh, and we've, we've made a regular Ankylosaur just to see the difference between this Bumpy and the regular Ankylosaur. Um, because Bumpy does have a little bit of a few quirks to it, as, you know, appearance-wise, aesthetics-wise. Um, so as you can see just at the head, 
the one of the is it osteoderms or horns? I don't know, eyebrow horn, whatever you want to call it, um, isn't as big as the one on its right. So yeah, this one's a little bit smaller. So it's got a bit of, um, so it has a bit of asymmetry to it. That's the word I'm looking for. So this is a regular ankylosaur. Now, I don't know about you, but these ankylosaurs look around about the same size, if not exactly the same size, which is a little bit disappointing because Bumpy was only supposed to be 60% of the size of a regular ankylosaur because it's had ge its genes modified and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking at those, yeah. I mean, if we look at the head of that ankylosaur and then switch it to Bumpy, I mean, the base head feels very similar. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the, you know, everything to do with Bumpy is exactly the same as a regular ankylosaur. Just, they they took that little horn and went down. <laughs> Just took a few polys and went, yeah, move that a little bit down. And there you go, you've got your Bumpy. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a shame. I was hoping that it would be smaller than a regular one, but hey-ho. Anyway, anyway, so... One dinosaur that I was not expecting to get a skin is the T-Rex, because god, we have enough T-Rexes. But this is, um, Big E.T., which is from the most recent Camp Cretaceous, I think season four. Uh, where there was two of them, but actually, I really freaking like this skin. This looks gorgeous, look at it! Wow! This skin looks cool. Now, I mean, we'll probably put a side-by-side -side comparison and, you know, to the Camp Cretaceous counterparts with we've shown all of these. Um, um, yeah, it definitely looks similar, but I, I you know, it's, it's a T-Rex model. Like, they haven't actually changed the sculpt and the model of the T-Rex. They've just given it a different skin. And I feel like we had a very similar skinned T-Rex in Jurassic World Evolution. I think it was like a Lost World skin. It was a little bit different, or Jurassic Park 3 skin. Um, but hey-ho, it's a free skin. Well, it's not a free skin, you have to pay for it. But meh, it's all right. So quickly, let's change the time of day. So, oh, look at them, they are gorgeous. Wow, holy crap, those are amazing. Oh, it was my favorite as a kid, but now it's the beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Wow, so this is the base one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the one that we've seen in the show. Uh, if we just have a look at its skin, this is the Lux one. And then this one that's more pale, I'm pretty sure will be the Lux two. Um, and I don't know, there's not too much of a difference. Um, when it comes to their glowy, I was kind of hoping it would pulsate or move. You'd have some sort of glow going through. I know in Jurassic World Alive it kind of does that, and I think in the show it also does that too. Um, but if anything, it looks gorgeous. And it, you know, you look at everything else, you can zoom out and you can see them. You can see them from space. It'll add an extra variety. You know, now if you need paras, this is like a, an auto include in your park. Just if, you, if you're making a park that looks pretty, or just anyway, if you're gonna make paras, you want these guys. They look, I mean, they're kind of boring during the day, but then most of the dinosaurs will spruce that up and look pretty. But at night, everything looks the same, except for the paras, because my God, look at that. They look so beautiful. Right, so let's quickly switch back to day and get on to the star of the show. So with Scorpius Rex, you have loads of, uh, you know, we're going to make a video on it and showcase all the different patterns and the colors and all that jazz. But there are two specific ones that you get with Camp Cretaceous DLC, as well as the creature itself. And that is two 2015 ones. And uh, this is, I think, the Type A. Also love that there's drool there in it. It looks gorgeous. Scorpius Rex 2015A. And then over here, we have B. Now this one, I think, is more similar to the toy. It's more dark, and the underbelly is far more distinct from, it, you know, its top. And we can, of course, compare them. So you've got that one. This one's not my favorite. This one, however, is way better. This one looks gorgeous. I don't know if that one's more like the one from... 
I mean, there was two of them, right? There was two Scorpius Rexes in Camp Cretaceous. Spoilers. Um, I don't know how they managed to reproduce, but I'm assuming it's the same way Blue did in Dominion, you know, the upcoming film. Because uh, I don't think there was two of them, and I don't know how it got to an adult straight away. Um, but these guys... Oh! If you're getting the camp... Oh, God, is that Bumpy? Oh, Bumpy's gonna just kill it straight away. Wow. Look how look how big Bumpy is in comparison. Jesus. Bumpy's way too big. Bumpy needs a rescale, man. Bumpy he hella needs a rescale. Yeah, look at that. Look how small that Aranosaur is. I mean, maybe it's not too much smaller. But I think I actually prefer this guy over Jurassic World Evolution 2. Jurassic World Evolution 2's Aranosaur is too smooth. Whereas this one, yeah, I like it. It's like a goose. I wonder who's gonna win this one. Oh dear. Oh, Pierce against a Scorpius Rex. I don't know if Pierce is gonna win. Oh, 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 oh okay. It just, it just died like that, eh? Oh, we're gonna see the Oranosaur get hunted and, oh. Lovely kill there. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up here. Because otherwise we'll be here for ages. And I've got lots of stuff to do. It's a busy time. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye-bye.